Hello, we're going to discuss today the solution of the last problem. Here's a box with a, a hole at the top. In the box stands a person and she is standing on a scale. And the person holds a rope in her hand, goes over a pulley and is attached to the box at this end. And we have assumed that the rope is massless, or the mass can be ignored, and that the pulley is frictionless. The person, strong woman, pulls on this rope in such a way that the whole system is static. Nothing is moving. And the question now is, what will the scale read? If she were to look down on the scale, what would the scale read? And we agree that the scale indicates kilograms. In other words, it reads the mass of the object. Many scales are in kilograms, believe me. The mass of the person is M1, the mass of the box is M2, and the mass of the scale is M3. What is the reading of the scale? Well, I advise you to make free body diagrams. And I will do that. I will make for each object a free body diagram, which will immediately lead you to the solution. I will then show you that there is also a shortcut, which makes it a little faster. Not necessarily conceptually easier, but a little faster. Okay. Let me remove this. So the most important of all is that you are able to identify the forces that act on each of these objects separately. So the person, the scale, and the box. Let us start with the person. The person has a mass M1, so the gravitational force down is M1g. The person holds the rope in her hand, which is pulling upwards, and the tension of the rope is T. I want you to appreciate that the tension in the rope must be everywhere the same, because we have assumed that the rope is really massless, negligible mass. If it were not the same, if it were larger here than there, then it would mean that there is a net force on a piece of rope, and the piece of rope has no mass, so it would give an infinite acceleration. So the tension here is everywhere the same. So T up and M1G down. Now comes a key point, a key point. The person is standing on the scale. That means the scale is pushing upwards on that person. We call that the normal force and I call that N1. That N1 is what the scale will read. It won't give you the value in terms of newtons, because no scales come in newtons, it gives you the answer in terms of kilograms. But key is that you understand that this N1 is our objective. We want to know what N1 is. That is the force which with the scale pushes upwards on the person. Let's now go to the scale. If the person is being pushed up by the scale in this direction with M1, that means the person pushes down on the scale with M1. So M1 is down. The scale has a mass M3, so the gravitational force is M3g. Now, it is the bottom of the box that is now pushing upwards on the scale. It's another normal force. And I call that M2. 
There are three forces here and there are three forces there. Let's now go to the box. Right here, the string cable pulls upwards on the box with the tension T. The gravitational force down on the box is M2G. Now, since the box is pushing upwards on the scale with a normal force M2, the scale must push down on the box with M2. And so here you see M2 down. This is at the heart of the whole problem. And this will give you three equations with three unknowns. You will see shortly how that works. T and 1 and N2. And you can solve for all three. So let me move my camera. A little more. This is fine. This is great because you still see the images on the left. So let's go to the person. T up, I call that positive. N1 up, I call that positive. MG, M1 G down, I call that negative. The sum is zero because the whole problem is static. No one has any acceleration. The system is all at rest. So the net force on this person is zero. That's what you see here. The net force on the scale must also be zero. So N2 upwards, minus N1 down, minus M3G must also be zero. And then on the, on the box itself, I hope you can still see that. Look at the box on the left. On the box itself, T is up, N2 is down, and M2G is down, is zero. Three equations with three unknowns. T and 1 and N2. Now, the easiest is to add them all three. Because if you add them all three, N1 will disappear and N2 will disappear. Because there's a plus N2 and a minus N2 and there's a plus N1 and a minus N1. And so you immediately solve for T. And this is the result. T is M1 plus N2 plus M3 times G divided by 2. Well, once you know T, you got M1. Because you substitute this t in this equation and you get immediately n1 and that's the end of the problem so let's move the camera again let me see whether i moved it far enough yeah i think that's fine So we substitute T in the first equation for the person. So we substitute this value for T in here. And that gives us that N1, which is really the one we want to know, is M1G minus T. And if you substitute T in here, this is your answer. So the final answer is that the force in Newton's onto the scale is M1 minus M2 minus M3G divided by 2. And that is what the scale will read if the scale were calibrated in Newton's. But our scale is calibrated in kilograms. And so when we 
substitute for M170 and for M225 and for M33 was just a numerical example that I asked you to evaluate. Then we can forget about the G because we're going to work in kilograms. And so the scale will indicate, indicate 70 minus 25 minus 3 divided by 2 and that is 21 kilograms. So that's the answer the second answer that I wanted from you. Now I will show you a shortcut and the shortcut means that yes we need this equation but we really don't need this one and we're going to replace this one by a different one. So it's always easy after the facts to see that we could have done it a little faster. I believe though that the concept that you evaluate, that you make free body diagram for each of the three objects is essential. I will show you now that two would have been fine, two equations. So this is the first equation which is non-negotiable, that's the N1 that we want to know. Now look at the box. And look what is inside the box. Inside the box is something that has mass M1 and M2. And the box itself has mass M3. So there is a gravitational force down on the box, which is M1 plus M2 plus M3 times G. What are the forces acting on the box upwards? Well, the rope is attached here, upwards, and the rope is attached to the person which is standing there, which is equivalent that if you would attach it to the floor of the box. So there is another tension up, which is the same in magnitude as this. So that means that 2t is this. And if 2t is this, t is this. So had we been smart from the start, we would never have to talk about the free body diagram of the scale. We could have done this, call that if you want to a free body diagram on the system as a whole. A little bit abuse of the word free body diagram. And this equation, and that leads uh, to that result. I want to point out also one thing which is interesting, that if the sum of M2 and M3, that means if the mass of the scale plus the box is larger than the mass of the person, there is no solution. Because it would mean that N1, which is the reading of the scale, would be negative. It would mean that the scale would be sucking down on the person. This, of course, is unphysical. So the only way that it would work, that the person could hold the rope in her hand and the whole system is static, is when M1 is larger than the sum of these two. All right, take care, have a nice day. And I think it's fair to agree that this was not a very difficult problem. However, if you don't have the experience to very carefully analyze which forces act on what, then you have a problem. But now that you've seen how I did it, maybe you will not have a problem anymore in the future. <laughs> okay? All the best. And yes, 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 I would assume we are still friends.